hello and welcome back to my channel my name is jasmine rosette your favorite girl on the internet and today we're going to be talking about my fitness journey we're going to be doing a report card essentially on my fitness journey and specifically today we're going to be focusing on the weight loss portion of my journey but before we get into today's video i would ask that you would give this video a thumbs up if you like any portion of it subscribe so you can keep up to date with me and all the things that i'm doing and comment down below say hi i say hi back and without any further ado let's get into today's video i filmed a life update video last year and i believe that i said that i would be doing a quarterly check-in essentially of my weight loss journey slash my overall fitness journey because me going to the gym me you know trying to adapt to this lifestyle is going to be something that i'm wanting to do for my life it's not just for a certain period of time or until i reach a certain goal it's something that i want to kind of incorporate for the rest of my life but currently i'm on the weight loss portion of my fitness journey but overall i plan on continuing going to the gym because i really do love it all that stuff but anyways i kind of want to backtrack explain a little bit why you're seeing this video why you're going to start seeing quarterly videos from me so four times a year you'll see little check-ins on how I'm doing mentally, physically, and emotionally with my fitness journey. Right now, we're specifically focused on the weight loss portion of it, and then it will change to just an overall fitness, you know, journey check-in. But essentially, how I kind of started out this YouTube channel was documenting monthly, well, I was doing it weekly, and then I went to monthly, a recap of my month and all the workouts that I did and everything that I ate. And in 2020 uh, was the year, I think I talked about like my mental health and a little bit on how I was doing. 2020 was a really hard year for me. It was very, very difficult mentally and I'm sure it was hard for everybody. I know it was hard for everybody and I know I'm not alone in that, but I also like, you know, dealt with that year by eating because I didn't have access to a gym. I wasn't consistent. I couldn't go to the gym. Gyms were closed for a long time. And then I, you know, wasn't comfortable going out in public, uh, into public spaces. And so I kind of adapted to working out from home. And you guys saw, I, I still tried to document that journey and I ended up having to stop doing that. I believe uh, in June of 2021, I just had to stop because it just, it wasn't working. I was putting too much pressure on myself to try to lose weight, try to perform for y'all. And it shouldn't have been that because these videos for me really are just to kind of keep me accountable because other people will see them, but also like for me to look back on my journey first and foremost to see how I've done and then second to be accountable of like okay if I'm gonna post this video like I need to be consistent for myself I need to show up for myself and I definitely lost sight of that in 2020 and going into 2021. I think the last time I checked in with y'all I told you that I weighed about 223 to 226 pounds and that stayed consistent for majority of 2021 kind of stayed in the 226 realm of things uh for my weight and i finally got to a point of being really fed up in october and october and november of 2021 really just a lot of things kind of changed for me and that i noticed that i was getting apathetic about finally wanting to lose weight and feeling really frustrated i was just like i don't care anymore and that point of realization for me of realizing that i was apathetic was just like that's not good i'm not in a good space mentally i wasn't in a good space and i was really frustrated with maintaining the weight even though i knew that eating out all the time was the issue and overeating sweets and stuff like that on the weekends was the problem because during the week i would eat fine i would eat you know the meals that i would cook and then on the weekends i would just overeat and also like buy a lot of food on the weekend and not you know be as diligent 
And it just wasn't sustainable for me. And I was going up and down, up and down, up and down with my weight and mentally and emotionally was going up and down. So at the end of October, I decided to start therapy, which has been so helpful. And then in November, I decided to, well, actually the last week of October too, I went to a bunch of different gyms and uh, kind of did their free trials, tried to figure out which one I wanted to go to really wanted to find one that was safe for me. Um, I'm a black Latina woman. I need to find something that is going to be inclusive to me, which is hard in Colorado, um, especially the part of Colorado that I live in. But I also just wanted, you know, a gym that had every, all the equipment that I needed that opened early because I like going to the gym in the morning, early in the morning. And yeah, that's just how I used to operate before, you know, 2020 started. I would go to the gym 4.30 in the morning, come back, you know, get ready for work and stuff like that. And I wanted to kind of get back into the routine, but knowing that it would be different because I'm not gonna be able to exactly do the same exact things that I was doing before. So I found a gym, started going consistently in November and my goal for November and December, because those were holiday months, was to just really focus on getting more consistent with going into the gym, not really trying to focus on a goal of, I need to lose weight, I need to build this type of strength, I need to look this way, I need to eat this way. My focus was just getting used to going to the gym. So when January came, January 2022 came, I was consistently going to the gym five times a week and feeling so good about it um, and feeling really, really great. And so I decided um, the last couple days of 2021 to really set goals for myself in all the different aspects of my life. But specifically for this video, I'm going to be talking about my you know fitness journey, focusing on the weight loss portion. I decided for myself to give myself goals but also not put a ton of pressure on myself and to try to get back to a healthier relationship with food because that's something that kind of went out the window a little bit i wasn't having the healthiest relationship with food and i didn't want to think of food as healthy versus unhealthy or clean versus unclean you know lots of food can do lots of different things for you and i just wanted to think of food as fuel for my body and making you know, choices to find foods that make me feel good about my body and feel good in my body. And so that was kind of my main focus. And I decided not to write this goal down because I had a lot of different goals for myself for my weight loss journey slash fitness journey. I told myself, if you lose close to five pounds a month, that is all you need to focus on and all you need to do. Don't try to lose more than that. If you lose five pounds, try to stay within that five pounds or maintain. But if you don't get up close to losing five pounds or losing five pounds exactly, do not be upset with yourself. You're doing great. Just try to you know, go down gradually or maintain if you're not able to lose weight or if you're struggling or whatever because I, I go through things a lot, you know, emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, like there's so much that, you know, people go through and I go through that as well. And so that really helped me with not putting a lot of pressure on myself. I will say as a disclaimer, I am creating this video to just document what I'm doing and kind of what's working for me. And so I'm going to share a little bit about what's working for me. And I'm also going to share some progress photos. I'm not going to do before and afters. I'm just going to do progress photos because um, this is a, a lifestyle change. This is a journey for me. And I don't plan on just stopping once I re my, reach my goal. I plan on continuing because I, I have other goals besides losing weight in the gym. <laughs> like doing a pull-up unassisted, doing unmoderated push-ups, having a certain amount that I would do, or lifting a certain amount of weight or squatting or benching, all that stuff. Like I have a ton of different goals, like pistol squats too. Like that's, that's a huge goal that I would love to be able to do a pistol squat. But anyways, so I'm just sharing kind of what's working for me. This is not me telling you what you should do or suggesting what you should do for yourself. I'm just sharing my journey because I 
I want to be able to look back on it and see how far I've come and see the progression because I feel like sometimes it's hard to appreciate your body where it's at in the moment, but also to see those results on a day-to-day basis, I still feel as though, you know, I'm the same size, even though I'm not (laughs) on my weight loss journey. Um, I don't know if that makes sense if you're also going through that, but if you've lost weight, I think sometimes it takes a moment mentally and for your eyes sometimes to kind of adjust to your new body and the things that you're changing or, you know, the small differences or big differences that are happening to you. So whether it's externally or internally, that being said. So physically, I feel like since going into the gym, I've definitely gotten so much stronger. I, towards the end of 2021, I started with like eight to 10 pound dumbbells. And now I can consistently, you know, work out with 18, 16 to 18 pound dumbbells. And I typically do high reps because I'm toning. You know, I also put on muscle (laughs) very easily. Like I can gain muscle and I've definitely experienced that where I've gained muscle where I was like, I'm eating the same thing. And I realized I just went up in weights uh, that I was lifting at the gym a little bit too soon and I was gaining that muscle. So that's something that I noticed about myself is that I gain muscle really quickly. And so I am kind of sticking to 14 to 16 pounds, 18 pounds on full body days, kind of, but for certain things, you know, kettlebells, like 35 pounds and, you know, some things I kind of go up on, but like consistently for like arm workouts, I try to stick to 14 to 16 because I'm doing three to four sets of 15 reps consistently. Um, But I definitely do feel stronger. I've noticed that my arms are a little bit more toned. I've also seen that my core is a lot stronger physically, which is nice. I also started out doing like 30 second planks and that took me a while (laughs) to kind of get to doing a 30 second plank. And now I can do two sets of 45 second planks and you know, at the end of my ab circuit exercise, because I do abs every day and I have like a little circuit that I do of abs, of my little ab routine to focus on core. I would say core, core routine, because I'm not really fussed about getting abs, more so about just building a strong core. And that's another improvement that I've noticed on the Stairmaster. That's where I noticed a bigger difference too. Cardio wise, I was able to do 30 minutes always on the Stairmaster, but I went from a level two to a level five now, and I can do that unassisted without resting. I can just stand up straight and kind of do it. It's still hard and I still sweat a lot and it's difficult. If you see on my Instagram stories, the sauna sessions with Jazz, shout out to Cub for helping create that or t- actually telling me to do that, <laughs> to call it that. You'll see that I definitely be getting out of that session just like, drenched in sweat. The Stairmaster, I absolutely love it. And I do the Stairmaster every two weeks. So I try to, you know, rotate from doing the treadmill to doing the stairs to doing bike. I don't really do the elliptical that much. And I just do 30 minutes on the Stairmaster. And yeah, and I have, it's like 25 minutes of level five. And then I do a cool down for five minutes. And that's just been really great. And to notice that I'm able to go from two to level five is just great. I hope by the end of the year I can get to level 12, but I think realistically I can get to level eight. So we'll see how that kind of goes, but that's kind of how I've noticed I've done physically. Mentally, I would say I just really enjoyed going to the gym, at least in January and February, I really enjoyed going to the gym. February was a little bit hard because I definitely like, had a moment of gaining muscle and I got really frustrated, but I still enjoyed going to the gym. Whereas March, I gave into my cravings because I was on my period. And this past period, I was just really like, did not care, wanted to have the sweets, had a lot of sweets. And then afterwards I was just like, I am overloaded with sweets. I cannot do this anymore, mentally and emotionally. (laughs) I feel like those go kind of hand in hand for me. I like in January, I feel like I enjoyed the gym the most and I still do, but February and March kind of took a little bit of a hit. I feel like I'm now kind of getting back into it, at least for April, since we're starting April, I'll definitely get back into it (laughs) of being a little bit more excited to go to the gym and being a lot more consistent. Yeah. So that's kind of how I've been doing. I wanted to keep it 
kind of like short, sweet, to the point. In terms of my diet, what really just works for me is just truly eating in a caloric deficit. It does not matter if I go to the gym or not, as long as I eat in a caloric deficit, I will lose weight. And in terms of the food that I'm eating, I still have sweets. You know, I still buy chocolate for myself. I still will have candy or ice cream. I love the, it's the Cool House dairy-free ice cream sandwiches. You can get them at Sprouts or Whole Foods. I share a lot of like my grocery hauls on here so you can see like the foods that I'm consistently eating. I would say a lot of the foods that I buy, you typically are able to pronounce everything. Like you're able to understand every all the ingredients that are in the food that I'm buying or it's like a whole food or something like that. But I try to eat that way, but I also eat some processed foods like some chocolate or some ice cream or, you know, mac and cheese or soup or whatever. Like I don't limit myself to not eating them. I just eat in moderation and that's kind of what's worked for me. Another thing that's really helpful is drinking a lot of water. I drink a lot of water. Although the past couple weeks I have not been drinking a lot of water and I've noticed that and it was definitely because I had a lot of sweets and then I just lost the touch with water, but now I'm upping my water intake, but I drink close to a gallon, sometimes a gallon of water every day. And that is something that really helps me a lot is I feel like a lot of times where I think I'm hungry, I'm really just dehydrated. So drinking water is just crucial, really, really good, highly recommend. Something that's also helped is just at least this year of 2022 is just really getting a hold of not eating out as much. So instead of getting a lot of fast food on the weekends, I try to limit that to going to a restaurant with a friend. If I'm spending time with friends and I want to eat food that I have not prepared, instead of getting fast food, I'm like, we can go to a restaurant or eat outside or something, like pick up something that I'm not always able to have access to. And that really kind of changed my mindset of just like, I can always have like all the fast food at any point in time because they're everywhere. They're always there. But a lot of restaurants, some of them are seasonal with their menus or sometimes you just don't think of going to them as often and they cost like the same price, but it's like good food still. Why not eat there or get takeaway from there with a friend or, you know, by yourself if you're able to do that and do it that way instead. I, I've been really trying to focus more on that instead of eating fast food on the weekends and multiple times. I try to limit it to one to two times. It's also very helpful financially, so you're not spending a ton of money on eating out. But also fast food, they are higher in calories and it is harder to be in a caloric deficit if you are having multiple meals from fast food in a day. At least for me it is. And so I try to limit that to one to two times a week and not stress about it. And if I eat it more than one to two times a week, I don't put pressure on myself to be like, well, you have to under eat the next day. I'm just like, nope, eat what you normally do. Just try to eat your food at home, essentially. Because for me, making my food, it's just easier to know what's going in my body, but it's also, I can eat in a caloric deficit knowing <laughs> the food that I'm making. And I can also eat not in a caloric deficit knowing the food that I'm making, but it's a lot easier when it's food that I make because I'm having a lot more vegetables. But yeah, that's something that's definitely helped me um, a lot. It's just basically eating in a caloric deficit and kind of getting into the habit of cooking more food at home. In terms of goal setting, I made goals for the entire year for a lot of different things, but specifically focusing on my fitness portion, my fitness journey. I made like general big goals and then decided that each month I would kind of split it up into smaller goals so it was easier to obtain. So if I said that I wanted to, you know, do a pull up, you know, by the end of 2022, each month I should work on exercises that kind of help me to build that strength so that I can do a pull up unassisted. There's a lot of different exercises that you can do to kind of help um, you get to a pull up or even just starting on a pull up machine and being like, okay, like this month I'm gonna do um, 110 pounds assisted on the pull up machine. And then next month I'm gonna bring that down to 95. And then the next month I'm gonna bring it down to 85. And then by the end of the year, I have one pull up that I've done unassisted. And so just really, you know, having a general goal, but then being able to kind of break it down into smaller goals so that I can easily obtain them 
uh, each month, but also know that I'm working towards that one big goal for the end of the year. And that's something that's also helped to make it less daunting. I think I'll just get into the portion of like my weight at the start of the year and then what I currently weigh now um, at the end of March. So at the start of the year, I... I'm just pulling up my app because I like I record on my fitness pal. I also that's another thing. I track my food and I also track my progress of how I'm doing. So I track my food every every day and then in terms of like weight and stuff, that's typically like that's every now and then. The first time I weighed myself. So I'm gonna explain. On January 3rd, I weighed 231.7. And then on January 6th, I went up to 232.8. So I'm gonna say 232.8 is like my starting weight of the year because that was like the highest, even though it was really 231.7, but we're going with 232.8. What I currently weigh is 216.9. I have, so I'm gonna 232.8 minus 216.9 is 15.9 pounds, so almost 16 pounds I have lost this entire year, which is insane and crazy. So I've definitely been on track for losing five pounds a month, um, just a little bit over that, but that is really, really great. Very excited <laughs> with that, and I'll show pictures. The first picture is like when I initially started this weight loss journey, which was several years ago when I started doing the monthly recaps. I believe I was 233 or 235. I was 233 to 235. So that's what I looked like at my heaviest, which is pretty similar to how I'm, I'm sure how I looked at the beginning of the year. And then these pictures I took this morning um, and it's kind of like a side by side. I'm trying to wear the same shorts. <laughs> But I think I'm gonna have to get rid of them because they literally do not fit my waist. Like they were fitting around my stomach really well and now they fit like around my hips. And they're just like really roomy and baggy. I'll insert a clip of me showing you like how baggy they are. Um, yeah, they just don't really fit. They also have a hole in them. <laughs> and so I'm just gonna get rid of them. But I thought for the sake of this first video, I would keep them. I have kept them for a really long time. I've had these shorts for years, but it's finally time to say goodbye to them. So I'm gonna get rid of them. Uh, I mean, I'm sure I could definitely sew them. I'll probably sew them and then donate them because I don't, I don't need them anymore, these shorts. Anyways, so that is what I currently weigh, 216.9. I've lost 15.9, so almost 16 pounds this year really excited i'm feeling really good i feel really great and positive and i also feel like doing these quarterly recaps kind of telling you how i'm doing physically mentally and emotionally is great i'll also start to include i think for future videos just like little clips of me kind of working out you know some of the things that i'm doing a little bit so it's a little bit more cohesive and you can see a little bit more of what i'm actually doing to kind of achieve this and the foods that i'm eating and stuff like that. But I do what I eat in a day videos. I do grocery haul. So please do check those out because that is a clear depiction of the foods that I'm eating. And I've done days where I'm like eating out on like a Saturday or whatever. So yeah, do check out those videos because I'm documenting pretty much, every if I do a what I eat in a day video, I document every single thing that I eat or I tell you about it if I'm not able to take a you know, clip or if I forgot my camera or my phone or whatever, I at least tell you every single thing that I ate. And yeah, and if you need, again, the resource on where you can track your food, I would say MyFitnessPal is great. It's free. There's also a paid version of it. I use the free version of it, but MyFitnessPal is great. They're awesome. You can document your progress and track all the food that you eat. And that's been really, really helpful for me on my journey. If I'm not tracking my food, I don't do as well. Even though I know relatively what I'm eating, but tracking my food just really Really helps me kind of keep me accountable and keep me to the goals that I've set for myself and then also like in general I don't know if I've shared this I'm five seven five seven and a half I guess and yeah I weigh 216.9 pounds currently 
and I'm going to be doing another check-in at the end of the second quarter. So you'll see one at the beginning of July because the end of the second quarter is June. So that's when you'll see another check-in video next. And I'll show a little bit more, hopefully, of kind of that progress of how I've kind of got to where I'm getting. So it's going to be real. It's going to be open. It's going to be honest. The start of this year has been really, really great. I've felt really good, positive, definitely gotten frustrated when I've maintained weight. But I also understand it's definitely been me. Sometimes I gave into cravings, my period cravings. This past month were like frustrating, but then got through the block. And that's been really good. And then February was a little bit frustrating because I gained muscle and I was just like, what am I doing wrong? And then I realized it was muscle, wasn't gaining fat. That's fine. Can't build muscle too quickly, at least for me right now. That's not what I'm, the goal is. I definitely want to look, you know, be lifted heavy and like be jacked at one point, but I'm currently trying to, you know, focus on losing fat. Um, and toning and then I will start kind of building muscle later and that's just personally what I want to do and what I'm doing on my fitness journey because <laughs> this is all me this is all what I'm doing and what I think is working for me and what I enjoy so yeah also I don't think I've shared the kind of workouts that I do so I'll share my split I guess so Mondays are typically I, I work out five times a week so day one is typically or Monday we'll just say Monday Mondays is full body along with a 30 minute cardio session Tuesdays and Thursdays are 40 45 minute cardio so it's like either treadmill or stairmaster for 30 minutes and then ending on the bike like the relaxed bike for 15 minutes or sometimes 10 depending on the time i do glutes on tuesdays and thursdays really focusing on my glutes i do abs you know core work every single day um, before i start so like that's the start of my workout is doing core work and i have a little circuit that i always do and then wednesdays is typically either I think Wednesdays are lower body and then Fridays are upper body. Sometimes I switch them, but yeah, that's kind of my current workout split. That is what's working for me. And I just do weighted exercises. So I'll do um, step ups weighted. I will do lunges, squats um, with dumbbells. I don't really focus on the machines, but I think eventually as I like move up in weight and like weights that I'm lifting, then I'll go to those machines. But right now I'm just trying to focus on you know getting into the routine and then once i'm finished with the weight loss portion of my journey then i will go into lifting heavier weights and then i will do those kind of machines that are heavier because i definitely used to squat like 130 starting out and i would just maintain weight and it was really frustrating and now i'm just like i just need to build up to that because i know i could eventually go past that but we're not trying to squat 90 to 130 pounds right now we're just trying to do body weight <laughs> and just really focus on my form and that's kind of what i'm doing i'm gonna close out this video thank you so much for watching really appreciate you guys being on this journey with me if you haven't already please do give this video a thumbs up subscribe so you can keep up to date with me and all the things that i'm doing and comment down below say hi i say hi back and don't forget to stay kind stay true and stay laughing and i'll see you in the next one bye